Perfect. All right. Thanks, Coach. One second. Uh, let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hi, Dylan. Thank you for taking some time with us today. Um, I was just wondering, in, in your own words, um, what does Clyde Edwards-Alaire bring to the table that uh, maybe other backs that, that you guys have on the team wouldn't? And just what is some of his unique traits? Um, I like a short area of quickness, his ability to make guys miss in, in short spaces. I like the fact that um, he makes the first guy miss either by just outright making a miss or by running through him. Um, probably the number one thing is I just like his disposition, his demeanor, um, his football mind. Very smart. Um, has been evident of what we've seen during the combine process and everything leading up to the draft. And he's not um, disappointed at all um, during the process with all the virtual meetings since then. Well, let's go to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Dylan. Uh, a couple, two part question about Damian Williams. First of all, um, he's had some big moments for you guys, but not consistently over a long period of time. What tells you that he can still be that guy at this point of his career? And also, how did he take the news when he found out you guys were going to draft a running back in the first round? Well, I mean, one thing is, I'm, you know, looking at Damien's past, I think, you know, the since, since coming to the Chiefs, we got a whole lot out of him. We, able, he's able to show um, not only us, but show anybody who looked at him previous that, I mean, he's a higher-end player. You know, consistency is something he wants to continue to work on. Um, but I think when he shined, he shined, you know, at a level that helped us get over the hump in a few games and obviously um, helped, helped us in winning the Super Bowl. Um, as far as, you know, how he reacted to, you know, the drafting of Clyde, I mean, Damien is a competitor. So he's going to continue to do the things he needs to do and control what he can control, um, embracing guys and continue to move forward. What does he have to do to show you that consistency that you talked about? Like what? What's the next step for him in, in doing that? Well, I mean, the one thing that, that was great, I know when we started our offseason program, you know, Damien showed, you know, great leadership, you know, in the meetings, you know, and the first thing he pointed out is the things he needs to do, you know, just continue to be consistent. Um, I think with it being his third year in the system, um, those are things that's going to happen. I think it, just listening to the way Damien spoke about himself and the things that we're doing and the things he's going to do to improve, I think just his, his maturation and his offense um, is going to be a big jump this year. Let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Dylan. Uh, thanks for doing this. Good to see you. Uh, I have a two-part question. The, the first part is about um, as you're with Eric and, and Andy and even you know, Mike Kafka trying to understand where the offense may go next, uh, how fun or interesting has it been to not only understand what Clyde – is getting from the playbook so far, but what you guys can sort of create with him um, and sort of what his role may be coming next year. And then secondly, um, you guys drafted a running back last year in Darwin Thompson, and I know he's been eager to sort of show himself in a different uh, maybe opportunity or a different light in year two. Just what can you take from his performance in a limited role last year, and what are you guys sort of pointing him towards for year two? Well, well one thing is what I found out is just – you know, you, everybody in this offense, all of the halfbacks need to be able to do everything. So they need to be able to do everything. And then we'll let everything sort itself out from there. So, you know, Clyde, I'm not, he's not going to be pigeonholed and then the, hey, man, this guy's a third down back or this guy's this, or this guy's that. He's going to take on everything that the offense has and then we'll let the chips fall where they may. Same thing with Darwin. You know, it's going to be an opportunity from this year. Another guy I'm very excited about. Um, he, you know, he had a whole lot of things last year that didn't necessarily work against him. It was just the fact that he was a rookie. He had some limited opportunities. He did some things that was, some, that was good. He did some things he needed to improve on. And he took, you know, inventory of the things he needed to improve on, and he's ready to come out and do those things. So, again, a room full of great competitors, a bunch of great players, guys that can do a bunch of things. And the beauty of this is once we're able to get back on the field, <laughs> you know, we're going to be able to start sorting out where guys fall. But in the meantime, Every man in that room is preparing to do everything. Okay, let's go to Herbie T.O.P. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach. Appreciate your time here. Hope you're well. You too. Hey, um, we had uh, Tyreek Hill a couple of weeks ago. We asked him about um, his excitement level of getting a guy like Clyde edwards alaire in the offense, and he kind of compared his skill set to, to Darren Sproles. Uh -huh. How much do you see 
in Dar uh, in Clyde Edwards, and when you compare the two, do you see a lot of Darren Sproles in him as well? Well, I mean, you start looking at stature, and you start just you know um, comparing guys to other people. I don't know. I mean, you, you see those. You know, you look at the stature and the, and the body build and everything. Yeah, you can start doing those things, but until I'm on the you know get him on the field on this level, you know, and we start doing some of the things we're asking him to do on this level, I don't think that's a fair comparison until Clyde actually put his cleats on and put a Chiefs uniform on and go out there and start balling, which I expect him to do, and then we'll go from there. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. So uh, headed into training camp, I think what's natural for a lot of us to do is just look at these battles, and, and you look at your room with Damian and Clyde and DeAndre and, and Daryl, and we mentioned Darwin. It, you've been coaching since 2011. I just was curious as to just where this competition is going to stand entering a, a camp like this and is the uh, purpose here to find a definite starter or do you think it'll be comfortable to to roll with this thing by committee well I, I don't know I guess probably just like I said earlier you want to get all these guys out there you want to get going and see what we got one thing we know is on you know just looking at some guys pass and the snapshots we got of guys whether it be DeAndre at Washington obviously with Daryl and um and Damian and Darwin with us and then you look at you know where we drafted Clyde and what his body of work was um, in, in college you know we got some high-end players in our room you know and I know what the what the the guys that are returning some guys that we feel comfortable with um, but again you always want to continue to enhance the room and and create competition and just raise the level of the room and I think that's what we have how it all shakes down ultimately we're gonna let that thing play out on the football field that's the beauty of our game you know, we get a chance to go out and let's see what's what. So, and the whole room knows that, man, and these guys looking forward to it. Get along well, you know, um, very competitive. However, very supportive also. And they know at the end of the day, what they do is going to speak to where their role is when the season gets started. So, I'm looking forward to that. Let's go to Darren Smith. Go ahead, Darren. Hey, Coach Dillon, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. I would like to ask, obviously, you know, look, you've gotten a chance to be around Coach Reed as well as uh, Eric Bieniemy, and and, and ju just by hearing, you know, your last your last answer, you talk a lot like Eric Bieniemy. Obviously, with the ex expansion of the Rooney Rule that uh, that is uh, that is put in place, would you like to uh, would you like to see yourself have an opportunity as a as an offensive coordinator in the near future? You know, now that you have a Super Bowl title uh, underneath your belt. Uh, without a doubt, you know, I mean, you, you, you get into this um, because you you see yourself continuing to build, you know, um, do the job that you're doing at a high level and put yourself in a position to continue to advance. So, um, yes, that's something, you know, that I, you know, coming to the NFL, that's what my thought was to begin with, you know, come in, learn in the great um, circumstance, um, pick Coach EB's mind and Coach Reed's mind and just kind of see how the kingdom operates, which I've been um, very impressed, obviously. You know, won a Super Bowl, you know, just continue to advance myself while at the same time helping our overall cause stores when, it, you know, going back and winning another Super Bowl. So, yes, you know, make a long story short, you know, that's, that's what I'm in this for, you know. So, I, you know, I want to continue to challenge myself and continue to put myself in the best situation. Um, to take my career to the next level. Let's go to BJ Kissel. Go ahead, BJ. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. And my question is a little bit different, uh, not necessarily on the professional side, but more on the personal side. I think most people on the call have probably saw the E60 documentary that you did a few years ago uh, that won a sports Emmy. I'm just curious, you know, how things have changed for you and the relationship that you have just with your family since that story has come out now that we're a couple years uh, removed from everybody kind of learning some personal stuff about you. Um, everything's been good, you know, not, nothing's, you know, just ever, there's been status quo, you know, just, you know, spending time with the family, obviously not the last few months, you know, but, um, you know, just building on relationships, obviously the one with my dad, I mean, I'd have had that for a long time. It's, it's just like, you know, easy with him. We, we, we kind of think the same and operate the same, obviously, you know, talk about, talk with him about football, you know, and everything like that. And then obviously, you know, with my mom, just continuing to advance that that relationship, and man, it's been all good. You know, really, what what my sons, you know, building relationships with them. That's been that's been the thing that that I've really been pushing for because, you know, with them making these connections, with them being older, 
you still want them to have that connection. So everything's been good. It's been real good. Uh, BG, I think you had a follow-up there. You want to go ahead and unmute yourself? Yeah, sorry about that. I just wanted to, you mentioned your sons and I know that on social media, you see them, all the, the offers are getting there putting out. Just uh, How do you kind of take the, the coaching hat off and put the dad hat on? And how do you deal with that dynamic? Are you the coach or are you the dad or you try to play the middle a little bit? Well, I, I play the middle, you know, and the thing is, I mean, and I don't want to sound like that typical guy. I mean, you know, when they told me years and years ago that they wanted to play this game, I told them, if you're going to play it, you're going to play it at a high level, you know, and, and that's just what the expectation is in this house. That if you're going to put, if you're going to participate in something, you're going to try to be the best, you know, and, and those guys have all embraced that, um, working hard. Um, I mean, my, my 16 year old, my well, he's, he's 17 year old guy, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, he just came back from working out and, um, you know, talking with coaches and these guys is embracing the whole process, you know, and, we sit up and watch tape. We watched tape, some, some Chiefs tape last night. You know, guys want to sit up and look at individual and different things. So they're always doing things to make themselves better. I always tell them every day, what are you doing to make yourself better? And one thing I guess I could say in conclusion during this recruiting process for these guys, <coughs> the feedback I've been getting from coaches has been like, man, you know, these guys are like years ahead of their peers as far as just their demeanor and just their football IQ. So um, it's, been, it's been good to watch. It's been fun. All right, guys, we got time for a couple more. Uh, we'll go Sam McDowell and then Nate, you can close us out. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Coach. Um, we've heard a lot about what you thought of Clyde, but I'm just wondering if you can sort of backtrack to a month ago and just your reaction when, when you learned that that was going to be the pick. Well, I, I, it was, it, it's funny. You know, we're sitting there, obviously, we're at home and, and, and the whole thing going on. And as we're getting closer to that pick, you know, we're on the little uh, website that we were on. And, and um, I get a call from the – draft room I'm like oh shoot <laughs> yeah I knew wow it's about to go down they calling me in there for something so you know obviously went in there and was excited to hear about Clyde and I just couldn't stop smiling you know because you know I was I've been aware of him you know obviously um formed a relationship with him you know during this whole process and and kind of was even saying to him not knowing what, what we're gonna do but was even saying to him hey man you know we really want you and I ain't got no control over it but I'm just was wishful thinking but um just excited to have him, you know, and, and, and talk with him every day. And he's somebody who, who wants information. He wants to be great. I quiz him. I know this, this virtual circumstance is like starting to wear on guys a little bit. They're ready to go out and do something, you know. So you got to try to keep it as, as active and engaging as possible. But he's been doing great. Okay, Nate, you want to close this out? Yep. Um, yeah, thanks again. Uh, you know, Dylan, you mentioned earlier the idea that you want the running back, and particularly in this offense, the running back does kind of do everything, which I know is much different than, like, a lot of other uh, NFL systems. In these meetings, because you're looking at film of last year, you're installing new things, how much of this is a, is a full function of, okay, run game, pass pro, and receiving game? How much of the breakdown has really happened um, throughout this remote virtual period um, to where you guys can sort of evaluate everything at that position? Well, I mean, it's, it's all encompassing. So as we go through and, and through the phases of the, of the off season, I mean, you, 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 when we spent the week just on a run game, we spent the week on pass protection. We spent another couple of days on routes, you know. So, I mean, it's very important, you know, that, that we go through those. And, and what I do is I give the guys an opportunity to speak to it. You know, you want, you want these guys engaged. So, and man, run it down for me. Damien, what do you think about this? So these guys will talk about their own, positives and negatives they'll talk about the coaching points because I want them to be engaged with me I don't want to be like hey here's what you do these guys will talk about hey coach I really like the technique we're doing it work I need to be more consistent with it different things like that you know so I mean it's, it's something where you want the guys engaged but at the same time we're building you know a rapport in that room and building a trust level in that room to say you know we want to be you know highly successful when we get out there on the field but so we've been looking at it all Everything has been blended in there. And obviously with Clyde coming in there, I had to go kind of go back and redo that for him. You know, that's the biggest thing right now for him is we're not, you know, all of them, but on, with him on the field, learning some of the drills and some of the things we're doing, you know, especially as it relates to pass protection. Coach, we appreciate you joining us today. Hopefully we get to see you soon. 
Yeah, I'm hoping so. Hope everybody stays safe and 